And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has told us many ahadith regarding a Dajjal. He tells us that he's a young man, that he's white, that he's short, that his hair is very curly and he has much hair on his head, that he has a receding foreline, that he's wide chested, and very importantly the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam tells us that he's blind into the right eye. His right eye is neither bulging nor swollen, sunken. To his head. And upon his left eye is like a growth coming from his eyebrow, covering that left eye. And between his eyes is written, Kafara, Kafir. That every person, every believer will be able to read that, even if he's literate or illiterate. The Prophet tells us that he, he will not have children, but that he will be sterile. The Prophet even tells us that he will be crooked in his back. And that is the reason why the Prophet ﷺ gave us all these details is to prepare us for this. Because a Dajjal will appear in this Ummah. We will be the ones who fight him. And this is the king of the Jews who the Jews are waiting for. You see, the Jews were promised in their scriptures that a Messiah will appear between them. And when that Messiah appeared, Jesus the son of Mary, what did they do? They disbelieved in him. And they rejected him. And they called him a sorcerer. And they called him a bastard. This is what the Jews said. And they tried to kill him. And they tried to crucify him. But as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, they neither killed him nor crucified him. And so when the true Messiah appeared upon them, they disbelieved in him. And so what they are waiting for is this false Messiah, this Antichrist, the Dajjal, who will be the greatest tribulation between now and the day of judgment. And that is why the Prophet ﷺ commanded us in every single prayer to seek refuge with Allah from Him. Why? Why would the Prophet ﷺ tell us to seek refuge from an individual who the Prophet ﷺ knew was not going to appear until the end of time? I mean now, since the Prophet ﷺ's death has been 1400 and some odd years. And yet the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had told his Ummah to seek refuge in him. Because it is the greatest fitna, as the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told us, from the time of Adam until the Day of Judgment. Indeed, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam tells us that even the previous messengers all warned against the Antichrist. That the Prophet Nuh, the messenger Nuh alayhi salam, the first messenger sent to humanity, warned his people about the Antichrist. Imagine that. We know Jesus was about 2,000 years ago alayhi salam, and Moses was about 5,000 years ago, or, or 3,000 years ago. And Ibrahim was about 5,000 years ago. How long ago was Nuh? Yet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala taught Nuh alayhi salam to warn his ummah about the Antichrist. Indeed, the Prophet alayhi salam tells us that from the signs that showing his closeness and his appearance, that people will stop warning about him on the mimbas, on the pulpits. And I asked the brothers, when was the last time you heard a khutbah regarding a Dajjal. This is one of the signs of his closer appearance. The Prophet ﷺ tells us that before the years of his appearance will be years of much confusion, of falsity, deception, years of deception, in which the truthful person will be considered a liar, and the liar will be considered a truthful person. The trustworthy person will be considered untrustworthy, and the untrustworthy person will be considered trustworthy. And in those years, the Rawaybidah will speak. Rawaybidah, the Arabic language, means that small sheep. You know, like there's a flock of sheep, there's a newborn sheep. So they asked the Prophet what is the Rawaybidah? The Prophet said, it is an insignificant man talking about the affairs of everyone. And how much so do we find that today? We find insignificant people, people who are ignorant, people who know nothing, Stand up and tell us that the Ummah should be doing this or the Ummah should be doing that. That we should follow them, preaching to this and that. These are all signs that the Dajjal's time has appeared or comes come close to appear. And likewise, the Prophet even tells us the city 
in which his affair will first become apparent. That is the city of Isfahan. And the Prophet even tells us the neighborhood it is the neighborhood of Yahudiya. And that he will come. And the Prophet even tells us the first water he will drink from the lands of the Arabs. That is the area of Safwan. And Safwan is south of Basra, near Kuwait, where they had the peace treaty after the Gulf War. That's where, there he will drink his first water in the lands of the Arabs. That's the first land of the Arabs he will enter into. And that he will come between the Syria and uh, Iraq, spreading evil and spreading mischief on both sides, seeking to come to Medina. But the angels will not permit him because he will go to every single land on earth he will pass through except for Mecca and Medina because he will be guarded by angels which will prevent him from coming through